there's so much nostalgia in it, but in such a beautiful, like, uplifting way. <laughs> YouTube channel. My name is Taylor Gonzaga and I'm the artistic director and founder of Opera Cecilia and whoa have I been busy this fall. So it's been a little while since I've been on the channel but I am so happy to be back. Um, I'm coming at you today with another reaction analysis video that I'm super excited about. I've been really itching to get some brand new artists on the channel. My husband recently did some wonderful videos reacting to Pentatonix and some other new artists as well and we have gotten some videos up little by little but we're super excited to get back to posting with higher frequency to this channel because we are really so thankful to all of you guys who have supported this channel and made its growth up to this point possible. So um, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give us a like, comment, subscribe, and support Opera Cecilia. We also recently just started a Patreon and the information for our Patreon account is in the description of this video. So we really really, really um, encourage you to check that out as well, because there's some special perks, of course, for Patreon members that decide to further support this channel. Remember that we can only make so much money with monetization of these videos because of copyright and justifiably so, so that we can continue to directly support these artists' work as well. So if you want to help us financially for the future as we continue to grow our business, our company, and our channel, um, joining our Patreon is an excellent way to do that. So without further ado, today's reaction video is going to be all about Carly Rae Jepsen. And I originally, when Call Me Maybe came out, I thought Call Me Maybe was a really catchy song. And I didn't look much more into the artist than that. But recently with her newest album that's actually called uh, The Loneliest Time, which is the name of the song we'll be analyzing and reacting to today, um, I just, I saw so much in her as an artist that I had never seen before. And I was so sonically interested in this album. I found it so interesting. I wanted to talk about it on the channel so bad. And so, of course, we're going to do the title track from the album because it's my personal favorite. And it's also a little bit famous on TikTok, just a little bit <laughs> for those of you who are on that app. I didn't do a ton of background um, research on this particular album or this particular song. I've been jamming to the song for quite a while now. I absolutely love it. It's definitely on my playlist now um, because I find the format of the song so interesting. I definitely have my observations, but there's not a ton of nerdy analysis in this video. This is a little bit more just my raw reaction to the music based off of my musical qualifications. And I'm never an end-all be-all expert on an artist, of course, so there's definitely some things that I'll probably miss. But I did want to give background on just one artist. I wanted to give a shout out to the collaborative artist because everybody knows Carly Rae Jepsen at this point, um, but not everybody knows who she was singing a duet with on this piece. Rufus Wainwright is a Canadian artist, so there's some great Canadian representation happening in this music for sure. He was really inspired by artists such as Blondie and a lot of other rock artists, both male and female and um, that kind of served as a catalyst for his musical career and he's had a musical career with a lot of variety as well and one of the cool things that actually ties into some of the main themes of our channel and the main subjects of our channel is the fact that he actually wrote two operas himself and premiered his work with the Canadian Opera Company which is a pretty prestigious company in Canada and does some absolutely fantastic work. I've been hearing a lot from their emerging artists recently in particular and they have such promising, wonderful voices in their emerging artist program right now. So it's so cool that he also branched out into classical music and was drawing from many inspirations to make some modern opera works and that he even has that on his resume in addition to having released many albums himself, being on pop and rock albums, alternative music albums. It's just so cool to see a really versatile artists like that. And I wanted to give a shout out to him because not every Everybody 
may have known that information or known more about his background. So I think it's really cool to um, just give just as much acknowledgement and reaction in this video to the artists that the perhaps more mainstream popular artist is collaborating with and not just the artist herself, even though Carly Rae's fantastic too. So without further ado, we're going to dive into the video. I just wanted to go on the nerdy journey with you for a quick second. And we're going to look at the official music video for Carly Rae Jeff and Rufus Wainwright's song, The Loneliest Time. <laughs> I've had one of those bad dreams Where we're standing on your street I quit smoking that happens in the beginning of the video I absolutely love the silent film quality of the beginning like it starts like vintage silent films do where it's like the melodrama of like reaching out to your love and they both lean into that so well and it just right off the bat gives this video a retro vibe that I just absolutely love I love all of the different cultural like pop culture references that are happening in this video but it's like pop culture from the past you know and so that's what's so cool. There's like a vintage pop element to this. Um, it brings back classic song formats and it brings back hooks in a very different way. So hooks are used differently in songs now. And sometimes it feels if a song is on the radio, um, especially if it's like Billboard Hot 100 in the United States, especially, is that you will like hear a ton of different hooks that are strung together, but they're like very overt and attention grabbing. And to me this song has a ton of like little subtle hooks that instead of just being strung together they're sort of lay layered on top of each other if that makes any sense at all <laughs> that's just what I feel like there's hooks in the instrumentals there's hooks in the harmony there's so many potential things that could get stuck in your head at any given moment in the song and all of it is so much more subtle than some of the things that you're hearing in the pop industry especially these days. Carly Rae Jepsen has a very unique brand of pop and she draws from a lot of inspiration from the past, especially for this song. And that's so cool. I will also say that in addition to the cool retro music video, um, both Carly and Rufus look absolutely stunning in this video. And what I love is the fact that right from the beginning, there's just such a smoothness in the tone. And I know that has to do with editing and remastering the voices in the studio as well. But both of them have these very, very smooth voices, but it's smooth in different ways. So his timbre matches her so well because there's a contrast there. Her timbre is a little bit warmer and a little bit more round when she sings. Um, she muddies her consonants a little bit, but not so much that we can't hear what she's saying or understand the diction. Um, and then he has a little tiny bit more nasality or what people consider a cut or a bite to the voice. There's a little bit of a thinner quality, but not thinner in a bad way, just in a different way. Uh, but as a result of the two very different vocal timbres coming together, we have this incredibly aesthetically pleasing sound when they sing in harmony. I got a little goosebumpy the first time that I heard them sing in harmony together on this song because the harmonies are layered so beautifully and the beat is so infectious underneath them, especially when it comes in during the chorus and pre-chorus. So those are just some observations uh, just right off the bat from the beginning of the video. I can't tell you how much I love this song. This is one of my favorite new songs out there right now that's trending. So I sincerely hope you got some value from that and let's keep going. 
<laughs> I love the moon and I love the rocket ship. And their facial expressions. It's just great. so many cool things happening so like now they're officially in space <laughs> in the music video so they've kind of like gone up to another stratosphere which is a metaphor that kind of carries through to the um section of the song that sort of became tiktok famous as well but what i love so much about this is just how cool they both are and i say that in like the funny i know that sounds like so dorky when i say that but um what i mean by that is that they both are just like owning who they are as artists so much in this video and that confidence is coming through really clearly and it especially comes through when they're together what Carly Rae Jepsen is so good at doing in her songwriting and the music that she chooses for her albums is she's so good at making a relatively melancholy sentiment sound uplifting in some way she has this ability to layer music together and this ability to write a melody line or a vocal line or her and her collaborators of course whoever helped her write this particular song um, that conveys kind of an upbeat positivity or optimism despite the fact that she's talking about having gone through pain in the song and so it just kind of highlights the complexities of life and the complexities of these situations that we get ourselves in as human beings um, I also love the fact that unlike some uh, unlike other collaborations that I've been seeing this is a very like equal collaboration this isn't just a guest artist that came into her album and um, just sang a verse or did a rap solo or something like that. Not that those songs are bad or that that's a bad way to approach it. Sometimes that's all they have time for with collaborations. But I love how this is such an equal collaboration and like a true duet between the two of them. And they both have equally as big of characters to play in the during the course of the music video story. I love the fact that the moon is a character in and of herself and she has kind of her own personality and vibe. I think that's so much fun. She's kind of the backup singer. And I love how, once again, how all of the harmonies are layered together. You're going to have a really hard time getting anything but praise from me in the, in the song because I just think it's so well done. Um, but it's also such... There's something so uplifting about it, despite the fact that she's talking about how she was wandering down this the street of this lover that she had lost and that they were finally reuniting again. So it's the combination of the melancholy and the pain of having lost each other, but also the joy of getting to see each other again and how the love is literally like extraterrestrial or it literally makes it feel like they're launching them up to the moon into space because they're so happy that it can't possibly be a happiness of this world. That's at least what I'm getting from the video based off of the fact that they start in this like very retro environment on earth in a city in an apartment landscape and then they end up um, blasting off <laughs> into space in a rocket ship which I think is so great. the moon but lost in space i think we got there all too soon but you know what i'm coming back for you baby
We're going to go back and listen to that part again in just a second. That's the TikTok famous part. There's a couple reasons why a sound will become TikTok famous. At least these are my theories for it. But the main one is because it's just this like moment in a song that could be applicable to other situations. You can definitely see people making videos about it and applying it to situations in their lives or things like that. But at the same time, the infectious joy and the full dramatic commitment that she makes to this really, really brilliant little section of this song is what makes it ultimately so infectious. It's something that I tell my students, especially my students who are musical theater or opera performers all the time. Um, I always tell them that if you're embarrassed by a gesture that you do on stage, if you are not willing to fully commit to it, then your audience is going to pick up on that and they're not going to believe you. And so you're actually more likely to feel embarrassed embarrassed on stage if you don't fully commit to the gesture that you're potentially embarrassed by versus if you like hold back or try to censor yourself. A lot of people think that if they censor themselves on stage, it's going to help them and it actually works to be the opposite effect in most cases. So I always just tell students to own who they are and Carly Rae Jepsen and Rufus Wainwright in this video are perfect examples of artists that are fully owning who they are. And it's her commitment and the emotion that she infuses and the intensity that she speaks on rhythm, <laughs> of course, and using vocal variety, a variety of different vocal inflections, all the colors of her voice. It's the intensity of all of that that makes it such an infectious sound for us. So I'm sure she maybe had it going through her head that, oh, this could be a great TikTok sound. I know a lot of artists are thinking in those terms right now, but I don't think that's the only reason this became a trending sound. I think it became a trending sound because of who Carly is as an artist as well, and the way that she delivered that section. So let's watch that infectious joy over again, just because it's so much fun. And then we'll keep going in the video. All these fantastic dancers. What happened was <laughs> They're the characters we in reached themselves. the moon. But lost in space, I think we got there all too soon. But you know what? I'm coming back for you, baby. I'm coming back. And then we have this really fun retro instrumental. The mixing on the song is really good. The production is really awesome. <laughs> All these space costumes. We stare off into the distance. That's such a fun video. Oh my gosh. I love so much about that. I mean, you get so many references. You get stop motion animation. You have like 70s, 80s clothing styles and hairstyles. You have uh, kind of like a disco vibe to the way that the beats and the instrumentation are formatted. Um, you have so many vintage pop references. It kind of takes you back to like the beginnings of the pop industry and some of that like quintessential sound that, that we found so catchy and infectious about the genre in the first place place. There's so much that takes you back. There's so much nostalgia in it, but in such a beautiful, like uplifting way. Um, and she's just so good at portraying melancholy sentiments or 
actually kind of like emotionally heavy sentiments with so much optimism and love for life. And so there's just so many cool things happening in this song. I hope you enjoyed this reaction. I love that last section of the piece so, so much. That's probably my favorite part to sing along to in the car on the way home from work, to be honest. And um, I think the reason I love it is one, because of how beautifully the harmonies layer in their voices, the way that they handle their voices is very character driven and very dramatic in this piece in a way that's like also subtle and cool. They're keeping it cool. There's a little bit of playing coy, but at the same time, an ownership of the emotions and just an ownership of the fabulousness that is these the vibe of these two artists as well. And so the blending of these two together, it was such a wonderful ideal pairing for a duet um, because the vocal timbres are so different. And because they're so distinct in and of themselves, they work together and create absolute magic because of all those contrasts. I just love it so much. And I love how the song kind of breaks the traditional ABA format. We have all these different sections of the piece going on. We have pre-choruses, we have bridges, we have like tags at the end. We have a fantastic refrain that gets stuck in your head. So there's so many things going on in this song that are so cool. But anyway, I could go on forever and ever. Please go support Carly Rae Jepsen and Rufus Wainwright. Go watch the source material for the video. Um, and the, all of that will be linked in the description. And I hope you guys enjoyed this. I had so much fun doing a little tiny bit of research for this, but mostly just like a raw reaction of all of my thoughts of this wonderful piece. Um, go stream Carly Rae's new album. The whole entire thing is absolutely fantastic. And we'll definitely have some artists that we've been traditionally doing on the channel. There's another Dimash video that we'll be releasing soon. Um, I definitely want to revisit Angelina Jordan because of some intriguing things she's been doing lately. And of course, we can't forget about Aurora. So all of my fans of those artists, more videos from them will be coming soon, as well as some new fabulous artists as well. And some of your requests that you've been giving us in the past too. So Thank you so much for supporting the channel, and we'll see you all again next time. Bye!